at that point in my career, I had directed one film, Targets, with Boris Karloff, and uh, had published a few books, a couple of books, I think. But I was uh, sort of known in uh, film circles as an interviewer because I'd done monographs for the Museum of Modern Art about Hitchcock and Hawks and Orson Welles. And those, were, those three were the first publications about those directors in the United States. So among film buffs, I had a little bit of a reputation. And also I'd done some feature writing for Esquire magazine for about 10 years. And those pieces had attracted some attention. So I was sort of uh, in the underground in terms of people knowing who I was. But the last picture show changed all that. I started out as an actor when I was 15, professionally, and did acting, you know, in the theater mainly, a uh, little live television, which was just dying in New York at that point. I thought I'd be an actor. Everybody thought I was going to be an actor. And, but and I studied, the only thing I ever studied in terms of show business, the only thing I ever studied was acting with Stella Adler. Um, but at a certain point, I'm not quite sure when, but it was around the time I was 19 or 20, I directed my first play in New York and I think pretty much decided I wanted to direct as opposed to act. But I, I've done both, but the directing has dominated, you know? Oh my goodness, I mean, I, I learned so much from them. I'm not talking about people like Hawks or Hitchcock or Orson Welles later, Fritz Lang and uh, Otto Preminger and John Ford also. One thing I learned, I thought it was the way you made movies, was to cut in the camera, which was just shoot what you need, don't shoot more than you need. So in other words, prepare the scene in your head or on paper before you shoot it. Hitchcock uh, was a big believer in that. Ford, I saw Ford put his hand over the lens. That's enough, you know. Howard Hawks once said to me, always cut on a move, then nobody will see the cut. Well, you know, that kind of line, that kind of advice resonated with me through the years. I always think of that. Uh, or he said to me one time, discussing the geography of a movie. You know, the geography can be whatever you want it to be because it's only what the audience sees that is the geography, you know. Things like that. So I learned a lot of technical tips. The last picture show came out of nowhere. I was going to do another kind of little action picture that Don Siegel had recommended me for a, a book called The Looters which Walter Wanger was producing. And then Walter died, and then we actually did write a script. And I thought I was going to make a, a, a kind of a genre picture. And a friend of mine, Sal Minio, gave me the book, The Last Picture Show, and said he always wanted to make it. He thought he was too old now to act in it, but he thought I'd be interested in it. I read the book, and what interested me about it was that I had no idea how to do it. That interested me. So I had no master plan. Oh, now I'm going to make this kind of film. I, I just sort of went with the river, you know, whatever happened, happened. And uh, What's Up Doc, which I followed, was also very different from Last Picture Show, as different as Picture Show was from Targets. But I liked the idea of doing different kinds of movies, a la Howard Hawks. I, I liked delving into different challenges, you know, that, that's what interested me. I didn't want to do another Last Picture Show. However, now that I look back on it, you know, it, it's an odd mixture because the picture is made in a kind of classic Hollywood tradition, and yet its subject matter and the scenes that we're making are anything but classic Hollywood. The sex scenes were very candid. We had nudity. We had things that nobody did in the old days. So the, there was a kind of a modern or a, a new kind of point of view but within the classical filmmaking style, it, it's, it's, so it's, it's an odd mixture, and I think that was a good, a good definition of where I was coming from. Well, casting is critical. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, you know. I follow my instincts a lot of times with casting. I made a few mistakes. Um, 
here and there, but uh, I've been fortunate to find a lot of new people like Sybil Shepherd or most of the cast in, in Last Picture Show were, had not had big parts in movies. Ellen Burstyn, I think, had only been in a couple of pictures. Cloris had done a couple of pictures, but none of them had big parts. And that was sort of the idea behind the casting of The Last Picture Show, was to not have a, any big names in it. The picture didn't cost a lot of money, and we thought it would be off-putting to have a star suddenly turn up in this little town in Texas. But casting is a huge thing in, in all the pictures, because that's the actors are your, you know, are the medium through which you express yourself. There was never even a moment consideration of shooting any of it in a studio. I said, let's shoot the whole thing there. I was influenced to a degree by Otto Preminger and Anatomy of a Murder, which was shot entirely on location, and had a gritty kind of feeling because it was there, you know. And, um, but that was sort of the general movement at that time was to, was to sh shoot it on location. And you get something from the location, you get something from the isolation for the actors as well because they, they bond, they get close, they don't go home at night, they go back to the hotel, they, they haven't got any, any other distractions, you know. And I think that helps in terms of the intensity of the, of the experience. And also I'd learn the sort of guerrilla warfare of filmmaking from Roger Corman, you know, and, and that also has a lot to do with, you know, stealing a shot or grabbing it when the sun is going or just doing it on the run. And I think that helps a, a movie. Although I must say I enjoy stu shooting in a studio. We did a lot of that on What's Up Doc, shooting in studios. and It's a different thing. Uh, but I think if you're, if you're making a kind of a realistic picture, the more you can shoot on location, the better you are. I think I get more focused because I have something I'm creatively doing on a daily basis. And it's the same thing, making a particular movie. And I think I'm in a better mood, and I think I'm more fun to be around basically. My sets are not quiet, kind of like don't talk, don't raise your voice, shh, not that kind of set. Uh, I usually make a lot of jokes. I'm usually noisy myself. And uh, I try to keep it a, a lively set, try to keep it fun, unless it's a very serious scene or something where the actors have to focus on a dramatic moment or something. But generally speaking, I try to keep it fun for the actors. To be honest with you, my favorite part of making a movie is the actual shooting of the movie. Pre-production is essential, but is not that exciting to me. It's a, a grind. Editing is the least interesting to me. Because it, 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 in a way, I've already edited the movie when I shoot it. Uh, for example, What's Up Doc and Paper Moon, we showed to the studio literally three weeks after we wrapped edited and with music. So we were cutting as we went, but the picture was pretty much finished once we finished shooting. So uh, some directors talk about finding the film, making the film in the editing room. In fact, today that seems to be the prevalent way of working. I don't, uh, it's not the way I work. I work on the set, the creative, the most creative s part of the whole process for me is making the picture on the set with the actors and with the crew. Well, my father was a painter. He said, no painting is ever finished. And uh, Robert Graves, a great poet, said, no poem is ever perfect. So that's probably true. But I, I figure since you have to make a decision at some point, that the best time to make the decision is on the set. Everybody's there. You know, you might as well make the decision then. Frank Capra uh, said to me once, the most important thing about being a director was to make a decision. He said, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. He said, 50% of the time it's wrong anyway, but the point is to make the decision. And I, I think that's true. A director needs to, you know, they come to him with, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. And somehow, you can't take too much time and say, well, let me think now. Because the moment you say, let me think about that, it will hold it, then everybody sort of stops and everything sort of, and then it gets to be a sort of a slow tempo. 
And I like a quick tempo. I like to move quickly. I, from my old Roger Corman days, you know, Roger's biggest advice to me was when you get, you, you get a shot, don't say, let me see what's the next shot. Just immediately when you say, cut, print, we're over here. <laughs> next shot. So that everybody feels, okay. So even if it's a larger budget picture, I've tried to keep that kind of momentum going. Sometimes I'll walk on a set and say, what are we doing today? But it's always a joke, which everybody knows is a joke. So what are we doing? You know, what picture is this? I mean, I'll do that kind of stuff, but that's just fooling around. Well, you can't ignore reviews. I try not to read them. I have an assistant who I ask to read all the reviews and just give me the good ones. I don't like to read negative stuff. Unfortunately, for some years early in my career, I did read everything, and it was too exhausting and too depressing. Orson Welles used to say he always remembered all the bad reviews and never remembered the good ones. I think there's something about a bad review that sticks with you. So I try not to let them get in. You know, it's like my analogy is if somebody's shooting at you, you don't really want to s s raise your head to see what kind of gun they're using, you know, just to keep your head down. Well, it was the first film of mine that, that really connected with an audience, with a big audience. I'm, I was thrilled with that, and the picture still seems to work with audiences, so it's not, it hasn't dated or turned yellow with antiquity. It, it seems to still be fresh. I don't, it's not my favorite movie of mine, but it certainly became uh, an iconic film. And uh, I didn't think that way when we were making it. So the reactions to it, people still come up to me and say, I really love that, or they, you know, it's, it's very highly regarded. It was an life-altering experience on many, many levels. It, it, uh, it destroyed my private life. Uh, my father died during it. Uh, it created a career for me. So it was an epic-making film for me. And so I always I have a very warm spot in my heart for it, of course.